joining in with us on tonight for Bible study. Our scripture tonight will come from Psalms 100, and we're going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And it reads, Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let me say good evening to everyone who's listening. Thank you so much for joining us again tonight for Bible study. We're moving to 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> in the New Testament, in the back of your Bible, we are looking at 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Not St. John, but 1 John chapter 4 is where we are tonight. And John is talking to us tonight about false prophets and false teaching. False prophets and false teaching. And we will find in this, these first three verses how he deals with us, or them rather, that deals with false or erroneous doctrine. So we are looking at 1 John uh, chapter 4, verses 1 two, through 3 is where we will be tonight. We, we've already discovered there is the spirit of truth and there's a spirit of error. There is a spirit of truth, and there is a spirit of error. The spirit of truth is the one who abides in Christ. It is the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. He walks with us. He talks with us. He tells us that we are his own. He also reveals to us that which is true. Many times, men, women, boys, and girls will follow that which is in error and disobey that which is truth. So tonight, uh, John wants to reveal to us that there are false prophets, there is heresy, there are errors that are being taught in the world in which we live, but we ought to make sure that we know where we stand. Let's look at verse number one. Behold, do not believe every spirit. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Verse 2, by this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Verse 3. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. So John begins chapter 4 as he ends chapter 3. Let's look at verses 24 and 20, the last verse rather, and in 1 John chapter 3. Let's look at that verse, verse 24. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. We see the capital letters. We see he in him and he in, in us in him. And so he talks about abiding in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit abiding in you. And as you abide in the Holy Spirit and he abides in you, you realize that you're abiding in the truth. The Holy Spirit himself, God's Holy Spirit, abides in us. He goes on to say, verse number one, chapter four, first John, beloved, do not believe every spirit. In other words, there are several spirits around us. There are several spirits that honor Satan. Now he does not, John does not talk about those who are demon possessed. He does not mention here these people, and I don't want us to get all sideways on thinking that he's talking about those who are demon-possessed. He's not talking of demon possession here, but he's talking of, of people who are preaching and teaching the word of God in a 
extra biblical way, extra biblical, meaning that it's outside of the Bible, which means that you have made at you have added to the Bible or you may have taken away from the Bible. So John addresses this, these things that are extra biblical tonight, but he does not address in this particular pericope satanic worship, nor does he, he talks about demon possession, but he does talk to us tonight about those teachers who promote error. They promote the wrong things. They promote those things that are not in the word. So he says in verse one, beloved, do not believe every spirit. There are several spirits out there and they have people attention. These spirits are spirits that have gathered attention of mankind. These spirits are gaining momentum every day. These spirits are not of God. He says, do not believe. This word believe means to entrust. Do not entrust in every spirit. He says, don't think that every spirit is a godly spirit. Do not entrust or believe every spirit. But he tells us what to do. But test the spirits whether they are of God. Put those spirits to a test. Don't entrust any man, but put those men and their spirits to a test. He says to us tonight, whatever you do, whatever you're going through, however you come to a conclusion, test the spirit. When you hear somebody talking, when you hear somebody um, demonstrating, when you hear somebody talking about what is and what ought not to be, let me just share with you that John says, test that spirit. He says, test that spirit and find out if that spirit is of God. Test the spirit to see if that spirit that is talking, that spirit that is walking beside you, that spirit that is presenting, that spirit that is dramatizing, because those spirits that are evil spirits, they are full of drama. So it says, regardless of the dramatization, regardless of the theatrics, put that spirit to test. Put it to the test. He says, find out whether it is of God. Find out if it's of God. He's going to give us a litmus test here further down the road. He says, make sure that the spirit you're following is of, a God, of, of our God, the almighty God. Make sure that your spirit, that you're walking behind, make sure that the spirit that you're following is of God. He says, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. He says, be aware, be aware, be informed that every spirit out here is not of God. False prophets, how many of them? Many of them. There are many false prophets around us. There are many false prophets that exist. He says, test the spirit. And you want to test this spirit to see if this spirit is of God. Any spirit that you come in contact with, test this spirit to find out if it's of God. And the reason why you want to test it, because false prophecy is real. False prophets are present. False prophets are relevant. So he says, beloved, do not believe every spirit. Don't put your trust in every spirit. But test those spirits. Put the spirit to the test, whether that spirit is of God. He's setting us up here because there are false prophets that have gone out into the world. This word world is the cosmos. This word world, world is the adornment. This word world refers to that which is not of God. Men and women who are not saved. He says, test the spirit. Because false prophets have gone out into the world. Test the spirit to see if that spirit is of God. 
Don't just put your trust. Don't just put your faith in somebody that says they are called to preach, called to teach, and test what they say. Put it to the test. One thing about the New Beginning Church, I know beyond a, sh beyond a shadow of a doubt, they know beyond a shadow of a doubt when men are not teaching, women are not preaching or teaching those things that are, that are not of God. They know it. They, they've been taught, they have, they have a sensitivity for the word of God. And when you have a sensitivity for the word of God, you know when people are teaching and preaching if it doesn't line up with the word. Because you want to look at it from a content and a context. You want to look at it from the content. What is written? What is in it? What it how God has put it together. Then you want to look at it from a context. And the context is what is going on around what is written. What is going on in the atmosphere. What is going on in the country. What is going on. The reason why you want to make sure. And this is a, a not a spiritual but a worldly example. Uh, this is a parable. Um, when, when I was a boy, Coke was something you drink. When I was a boy... A uh, gave meant to be happy. When when I was when I was a boy, a cr crack was a line in the sidewalk, and therefore you have to do your work study to make sure that that you are saying what the word of God is saying because it was written at a different time, and as it was written at a different time, we need to understand the context in which it is written. Therefore, we just can't pick the Bible up and wherever it falls over, we're going to teach about this or we're going to preach about this today simply because it was written at a time that is not our time. Says, says to us, test that spirit. Put the, put the spirit to the test. Make sure this spirit is of God. Make sure that this spirit that you're following, the spirit that you're with, the spirit that you're hanging out with is of God. He says, put it to the test. Put it, put it to the test and see. Just see if it's of God. He says, because there are false prophets that have gone out. And these false prophets are in the world. And as they are in the world, then they are trying to get you to follow worldly advice, to follow worldly things. He says, test the spirit to see if they, if they are of God, because false prophets have gone out into the world. Verse number two. By this you know the spirit of God. And then he says, colon. He says, test the spirit to see if it's God. And then in verse number two, he says, and this is the way you test the spirit. He says, he says, by this, you know, the spirit of God, by this, you know, the Holy spirit, by this, you know, what is of God, by what every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. You know, there are still men, women, boys and girls that are still looking for the first coming of Jesus Christ. There are still men, women, boys and girls who are still looking to see when Christ will come the first time. John says in verse number two, by this you know the spirit of God. By what? By the fact that every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ and that he has already come in the flesh is of God. Very simple. If men do not confess that Jesus Christ has already come in the flesh, that spirit is not of God. It is not of God. It is not of God. If they do not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, then that spirit is not of God. It is not of God. That spirit is of the devil. It's not talking about demon possession. He's just saying that there are false prophets that have gone out and they are teaching and preaching erroneous stuff. Stuff that's laced with error. You see, when you look at Jesus Christ, when he was in Matthew chapter three and Matthew chapter four, when you look at that text, the devil used just enough of the word of God to, to get Jesus' attention, but he laced it with, with, with falsehood. He took the truth and laced it with falsehood. 
He took, he had, he had, he had an objective that was not godly. He says, he says to Jesus, once Jesus is, once Jesus is, is hungry, once Jesus has fasted 40 days, he says to Jesus, look, there's bread. If you really are the son of God, if you really are the son of God, go ahead and turn these stones into bread. He did to Jesus the same thing he does to mankind today. He waits till we get to a point where we need and a point where we want, and he offers the cure. Now, the cure is not really a cure, but he offers a suggestion for us. And when he offers that suggestion to us, his motive is to make us go astray. His motive is to get us in error. So he's looking every day to find out what he can lead us to do wrong. Um, his motive is not of God. His motive is to make sure that we error. So he says, John says, by this we know the spirit of God. He says you can recognize, you can see, you can understand the spirit of God and you can know the spirit of God based on what's coming up. What is it? You can know the spirit of God because the spirit, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that spirit is of God. There are still people that haven't confessed that Jesus Christ has already come. And the reason why we know that this spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has already come in the flesh, they are only of God because you have to believe that he has come in the flesh in order to believe that he died on Calvary. And in order to be saved, in order to be one of God's, in order to be with God, you have to believe that Jesus Christ have come in the flesh. Not only has he come in the flesh, you must believe that not that he came in the flesh, he died on Calvary, buried in a borrowed tomb, and rose from the dead. So the only way you can believe that he was buried, laid in a borrowed tomb, and rose from the dead is that he must first come in the flesh. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. In your Bible, you have a spirit spelled with small s and large s. When you see the spirit spelled in a large s, that means it is of God. Matter of fact, it says right here in verse 2, spirit of God. When it says every spirit that believe, it's talking about the spirit of men. It's, it's talking about the spirit of what we believe in. So what he says is, if the spirit of a man believes that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, then that spirit is, the, is, is a spirit of God. The Holy Spirit has come. Because if you can't even get past the fact that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, you can't make it to heaven. If you cannot believe that, that Jesus Christ was born walked on these mundane shores, born of a virgin, born and lived. If you can't believe that Jesus Christ has lived, you sure can't believe that he's died. And if you can't believe that he's lived, you can't believe that he's died, you sure can believe he rose from the dead. And in order for you to be saved, in order for you to be born again, you must believe the story. That Jesus Christ came in the flesh he walked these shores. He walked this land. He lived in this world. He was an innocent man. He did not sin. If you can believe this, then you have an opportunity to be saved. Mm -hmm. And if you can't believe that he's already come in the flesh, then you can't believe that he came in the flesh, he died for our sins, and rose from the dead. And this is what you have to believe in order to be saved. So he says, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Look at this. In order to be of God, you must believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. 
If you don't believe, if one does not believe that Jesus Christ has not come in, if one does not believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, then that one is not of God. It says it in the text. Verse 3, in every spirit that does not confess that, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. He says to us, every spirit that believes that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Then he says, every spirit that does not believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. It's pretty simple. There's no gray area. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. You have an opportunity to be born again. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, you have no opportunity whatsoever to be born again until you believe that he has come in the flesh. So God wished that all be saved. He wished that we all would join him in heaven. But everyone who joins Christ in heaven believes that Jesus Christ has already come in the flesh. Do you believe that he's already come? In the flesh. He says in verse 3, in every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Continue. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. He says, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist. So you either have the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of the Holy Spirit, you either have the Holy Spirit, you either have the spirit of Christ or the spirit of God, or you have the spirit of the Antichrist. It's, it's either of God or it's not of God. It's either of Christ or it's of the devil. It is either you in the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit's in you or the devil has taken over your life. He says to us tonight, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist, the one who does not confess that Jesus has come in the flesh. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. This is not of God. It's the anti, anti meaning against Christ. So you're either with us or you're against us. You're either with Christ or you're against Christ. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard was coming. It's nothing new for us to know that the spirit of the Antichrist is coming. We've heard it. We have seen it. We've experienced it. The spirit of the Antichrist. He says, we, we, we've already heard that it was coming. We read that it, it was coming. We've seen evidence of his coming. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard, which you have heard was coming. And it's now already in the world. He, he says, this is the spirit of the Antichrist. You heard that it was coming. Is already in the world. And I said I was going to stop at verse number three, but let's look at verse number four that leads us into the, the last pericope, the next pericope. It says, you are of God, little children. He says, regardless of the fact that the spirit of the Antichrist was prophesied to come and the spirit of the Antichrist is now here, is already in the world. Verse 4, it says, you are of God, little children. He reminds us, and every now and then, we need to be reminded who we are. Every now and then, we need to be reminded that we are of God. Every now and then, we have to be encouraged to, to remind ourselves that we are of God. You are of God, little children. He uses that phrase, little children, as he has done so many times in the first three chapters. He uses it in chapter four, little children, those who are freshly born in this gospel ministry, this gospel of salvation. He says, you are of God, little children. 
Not only are you of God, you have overcome them. Them, those who have the spirit of Antichrist. You've overcome them. He says, you have overcome those who have the spirit of the Antichrist. You've overcome that. You, you, you have, you have be, become stronger than that. Lady told me years ago, she said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to voodoo you. And you're going to follow me around everywhere I go. I'm going to voodoo you. And at, at that time, they believed that you can voodoo one by taking their picture and putting voodoo on them. It's a shame now we got pictures all over social media. So if, if someone wanted to voodoo us from our picture, then they'll have that opportunity. But the woman said to me, I'm going to voodoo you as soon as, as soon as I get a picture. Well, the problem I have with that, first of all, I'm just reasoning through it. Now, I'm a young man. I'm just reasoning through it. Well, why you need a picture when you got me standing here in the flesh? <laughs> she says, if I get your picture, I'm a voodoo. Then she says, I'll get some of your hair and voodoo you. But I felt so confident in the Holy Spirit who's in me. That I said, wait a minute, let me get you two, three pictures. Verse 4 addresses it. It says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. You've overcome those who are the Antichrist. Then he seals the deal. He says, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. He says, he says to us tonight, and I might as well finish this for Rick and P also. He says to us, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you, who is he? The Holy Spirit. You will never see God calling the Holy Spirit a it. The wise writers that over 40 men that wrote the Bible don't call the Holy Spirit it. So the Holy Spirit is not an it, it's not a thing. The Holy Spirit is a who. He is a person. So he says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because you, because he who is in you, you have him in you. He who is in you, who? The Holy Spirit in you is greater than he who is in the whole wide world. We know the devil is the prince of the world. He's the prince of the air. He's the prince of this atmosphere. The greatest one, the greatest one is in me, the Holy Spirit. That's why we don't have to go and get into any more lines, no more coliseums to get the Holy Spirit, to receive the Holy Spirit. When Jesus came in, when Jesus became the savior of our lives. The Holy Spirit came in. That's why he says, the greater one is in us. The greatest, greater one is in you. Matter of fact, I say the greatest one is in you. He says, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. He who's in you is greater than he who's in the world. Regardless of what in the world, regardless of who is in the world? The Holy Spirit, God in you. The Holy Spirit, Jesus in you. The Holy Spirit in you is greater than those that are in the world. Verse number five. They are of the world. I was talking to a preacher today and he asked me, you said that to that preacher? I said, yeah. So you, you, you told him that the conversation is becoming satanic and he was the one talking, yeah. The conversation was not of God. The conversation was of the devil. Therefore, the conversation was satanic. And I say to him, and I'm not, I'm not about to have this conversation. I'm not going to address your foolishness. In other words, there are no gray areas when it comes to God. It's either of God, it's either the Holy Spirit in you, it's either Jesus in you, or it's satanic. He said, wow. You you told him you told you told him that yes. As I got up from the table and began to walk away, and I began to shut the door. 
I'm not about to have this conversation. I'm not going to appease you. I'm, I'm not going to listen to this foolishness. This conversation is satanic. I guess the preacher was telling me you could have said it a prettier way. But I'm not interested in pretty. I'm, I'm interested in truth. The greater one is in me than in the whole world. The greater one, the Holy Spirit. They are of the world and therefore they speak as of the world. The reason why folk talk like they do is because they're of the world. The reason why people talk worldly is because they're of the world. Of the world. Brother told me, he said, man, every time I get with this guy, I hear stuff I don't hear. And he had to tell him one day, he said, man, I don't, I don't hear this kind of conversation till I come around you. I'm not used to this kind of conversation. But he's of the world. And the world will offer you the same conversations that they live out every day. And you have to decide whether you're going to entertain it. He says, the greater one is in you than in all the world. The greater one is in you. He, he, the greater one is in you than he that's in the world. And so they are of the world. They don't know anything but worldly things. Paul says to the church at Corinth, he says that don't expect the natural man to understand spiritual things because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Don't expect the natural man to un understand godly things because godly things are spiritually discerned. You can't expect someone who's not saved to understand a saved conversation. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world. Their talking is as the world. And the world hears them. The world believes them. The world, the world, the world put their trust in them. The world hears them. The world hears from them. And the world really obeys them. So he says in verse number six, we are of God. This is not bragging rights. It's just facts. We are of God. And since you of God, you ought to have some godly characteristics. If you don't have godly characteristics, others begin to question, are you of God? He says, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. Going back to the false prophets, he's going back to those who are speaking for the devil. He goes back to those who are speaking in error. He says, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. In other words, we are God and we are on one accord with those who hear us and those who speak that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He who is not of God does not hear us. John says, we're teaching, we're preaching, we're living our lives, we're exemplifying Christ, and people don't hear us because they're not of God. He says, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. And who, he who is not of God does not hear us. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. By this, we know the spirit of truth. In the spirit of error. So he gives gives several things here. He says, he says, first of all, try the spirit. Test that spirit to see if that spirit is of God. He says, don't just believe the spirits, but try, test, put every spirit to a test and see if it's of God. And the reason why you're putting this spirit to a test is because many false prophets have gone out into the world and they're talking stuff and people are listening. They've gone into the world. Then he says, by this you will know the spirit of God. How do you know? That who confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, you know that person is of God. Then he says, those who do not confess that Jesus Christ has come, to, come in the flesh, they are not of God. Matter of fact, he says, this is the spirit of the Antichrist. 
And the spirit of the Antichrist is running rapid. And he says, you've been warned, you've been told that the spirit of the Antichrist is on its way. The spirit of the Antichrist is coming. And the spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. That spirit, that spirit. You, you, can, you can go around some people and they have such a vile spirit. And then you can watch people who surround themselves with that same person. They have a similar spirit or the same spirit. It says the spirit of the Antichrist does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Then he reminds us in verse number four. You are of God, little children. It says, let me remind you, you haven't been saved a long time, but you need to know that you are of God. See, it tears a hole in the thought that I've been running for Jesus 40 years and I'm better than you are. He says, you are of God, little children. He says, you are of God, even though you just accepted Christ. And because you've accepted Christ, because you're noted as little in that group of little children, you have overcome them. You got rid of that error. You got out of that error. This error, this heresy that's being taught and, and pushed on mankind you beyond that. You've overcome that. Then he reminds us of some somebody's favorite statement or somebody's favorite verse. He reminds us, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And therefore, we ought to act like it. We ought to walk like it. We ought to talk like it. In the midst of our dejection, in the midst of our despair, in the midst of our discouragement, just be reminded that the greater one is in you. The Holy Spirit, he's in you. These others are in the world. Therefore, they speak. They speak as the world. They act like the world. They say things of the world. They carry themselves as things of the world. And the world hears them. In other words, the world gets along really well. I wish the church would get along as well as the world. <laughs> You can see a bunch of wine old sitting around. They share bottles and swapping lies. You see church folk, they can't get along. The world, the world hears each other. The world walks with each other and talks with each other. The world, they are not jealous of each other. They support each other. Then he goes on to say, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. He says, yeah, the world got the group that's hearing them. But we got the group that's hearing God and they are hearing us. We are hearing from God and the people that of God are hearing from us. He who is not of God does not hear us. Stop acting like they have to hear you. They won't hear you until they get saved, until they get to know Jesus as their personal savior. By this we know the spirit of truth and by this we know the spirit of error. If you ever want to get to know Jesus, you can do it right now. If you ever want to be of God, if you ever want the greater one to be in you, the greatest one to be in you, you need Jesus the Christ. The text plainly says that you must believe, first of all, that Jesus has come in the flesh. And in order to believe that Jesus has come in the flesh, you must hear the word of God. Now that we know that Jesus has come in the flesh, then we can believe that he died on Calvary. Because he's come in the flesh, he died on Calvary. Now we must believe that he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And if we believe that he died on Calvary, was buried in a barbed tomb, we must also believe in order to be saved that early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. And if I believe that he died, he was buried, and he rose, now I believe that he lives. And if I believe, according to verses 4, 5, and 6, if I believe that he lives, I believe he lives in me. And now that he lives in me, the greatest one is in me. The greater one is in me. His name is Jesus. He died for you and he died for me. And you can get to know him tonight. 
You just want to trust him. Believe him. You can come to know him tonight. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You can get to know Jesus. All you have to do is believe the story. That over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on Calvary. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. The door of the church is open. You can receive him right here, right now. You can believe that Jesus is the Son of God who gave his life as a ransom for you and me. And that same Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. If you can believe this story, you can go to heaven. Whenever you die, whenever you leave here, you can go to heaven. Would you like to go to heaven with me or go to heaven with others? If you would, just bow your head with me and invite him into your life. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you pray this prayer, we believe that you're now born again. And when you die, you go to heaven and you will forever be with the Lord. We believe even today that the Holy Spirit has come in and he resides in you and he walks with you. And he lives within you. We believe that even tonight, as you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, we believe that the greatest one, the greater one, the great one, is in you. And this greater one is greater than all those that are in the world. You are sure tonight. You are sure that Jesus Christ, God the Holy Spirit, God the Father resides in you. And we believe that Jesus saves. And he saves from the worst to the best. And to be actually real with you, none of us are the best without Jesus. But if you receive Jesus tonight, you are now among those who hear us, those who hear the word, those who hear God, because the greatest one is in you. If you're looking for a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. Inbox us and let us know, number one, that you received Jesus Christ as your Savior. Number two, that you want to join the New Beginning Church. We have global members as well as local members. We'll be glad to welcome you to this great family of faith. And as we close out tonight, we want to lift you in prayer. If you are going back and forth and you're struggling with your life, maybe you're saved and you're struggling to get it right as all of us do. I want to pray with you as we come to a close tonight. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us. We thank you for every hearer of your word. We ask you to bless us, Father God. Bless your word to manifest itself in our lives. Bless us, Lord, that we will always be conscious that the greatest one is in us and in all the world. Bless us tonight, Father God. Heal the broken and those in despair. We pray, Father God, for family members of those who've been killed and those who are hurting, Lord. We pray that you strengthen them. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless the church to preach the gospel, that lives will be moved and lives will be saved. Lord, we thank you for saving souls on tonight. We thank you for reaching those who are looking to rededicate and repent. We pray, Father God, that you bless our churches to be 
beacon lights throughout the whole world. Bless every church that's open in the name of Jesus. Every church, every pastor, every leader that believe that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and that he died for our sins and rose from the dead. Lord, I ask you to hold back, to hinder the works of the devil. Bless the church to shine in tough times. Bless the church, Father God, to move like never before. Bless the church, Father God, that the church, Father God, the universal church, will reach men, women, boys, and girls on a regular basis. Turn hearts toward you, Father God. Even in the midst of tragedies, Father God, we ask you to reach men, women, boys, and girls. Lord, we thank you for this privilege of worship. We thank you for this privilege of your word. We ask you to bless your word to be real to us and real through us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight at the New Beginning Church. Uh, from our remote location, thank you for being a part of our service. Also, you can give to the New Beginning Church in two fashions. You can mail your, your offering in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Also, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zell account. I also want to take this time to thank every person, every individual, every church, every pastor, every organization, every ministry for supporting the New Beginning Church in our tough times. Churches have been tremendously generous to us. Individuals have been generous to us. Ministries have come along beside us. Para ministries have been very generous to us. I just want to say thank you. Thank you and I ask you to continue to pray for the New Beginning Church. That we, this Sunday, will lift up our voices in the sanctuary at the New Beginning Church. I ask you to pray for the city of Houston that that we will find favor. Pray for center point energy, that we will find favor. Pray for engineers and technicians and electricians, that we will find favor and that we will shout on Sunday morning in our building. We're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to God doing a great thing. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support, your moral support. We thank you for your financial support. And many of you have given over the top, and you've been a blessing to the New Beginning Church. Again, thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for joining us now. We want to keep those who are on our prayer list in prayer. We're going to continue to lift them, continue to walk with them, and encourage somebody today. Make sure somebody knows that you care. Make sure you show somebody love. Because you know what? We never know when it's our last time. We ought to always be loving and kind to everybody. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. And God bless. Thank you so much for joining us. Be blessed.